Okay, I'm talking to singer-songwriter Johnny Russell, uh, who's just written a wonderful song called The Immortal Southern Cross. Uh, good day, Johnny. How are you? Not too bad. Look, I've had a listen, and this is a great song. How did The Immortal Southern Cross come about as a song? Well, uh, it came about... I've always been interested in Australian aviation, and some years back I met a man called Austin Byrne. He was a historian. And he created a great uh, lot of memorabilia to do with Charles Kingsford Smith. And he, he got talking to me one day and he said, It's a shame that no one has ever written a symphony, as he put it, or a song uh, commemorating the wonderful works of Charles Kingsford Smith. And I was driving back from the Central Coast where he lived and um, I thought to myself, Well, I'm a songwriter, to, uh, to somewhat, somewhat of a songwriter. Maybe I could write a song uh, to do with uh, Smithy. And, uh, giving the uh, c commemoration and praise that he deserves. So I did a bit of research and I came up with this song, The Immortal Southern Cross, and I wrote it in the in the eyes of the of the plane, really, the, the, the Southern Cross plane, because um, uh, it was the plane, he was the first person to, to, to make that epic trans-Pacific crossing from Oakland, California to Australia back in June 1928. So that's how the song actually came about. Now, what I found quite amazing on the song was you actually have the voice of Charles Kingsford Smith on on the track. How how were you able to get that? Well, that's right. We uh, got talking to Austin again one day, and uh, he, he said, "You know, if you if you write a song and record it, he said, why don't you use the actual speaking voice of Charles Kingsford Smith?" I said, "Well, that's you know e easier said than done. How would I go about that?" And he said, well, actually, so I, I have got a copy of it on, on cassette. And he said, if you like, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give it to you. And he, he dug it out and gave it to me, and I took it home. And we took it to the studio, and we cleaned it up a bit. And, um, yeah, so that's that in itself, I, I think, would be a world first, having the actual speaking voice on the record. At the end of the song, you know, he comes in, and he says, in doing what I did, he said, I did something worthwhile for Australia. That's the CD. And of course, that's Smithy, and that's the plane. Yes, and he and, certainly uh, did do something for Earthwall. Yeah, for and in writing the song, I feel that I'm doing something to keep his name alive because a lot of people have forgotten him, and some people don't even know it. Even the younger people don't even know of him. And uh, I think he would have wanted me to do this um, to commemorate and to keep his name alive for this generation and the generations to come. Now, I read the cover notes on on that CD case. And again, you you have the cover notes have been written by uh, Nancy Bird Walton, who was a famous Australian aviatrix. She certainly was. And, uh, she certainly was. Now, did you you actually got to meet her? I met I met her on several occasions. She was a lovely lady, and um, well, actually, she was given the very first flying lesson by Smithy in 1933. And I, I told her I was going to do this song, and I said I'd be honoured if she'd write the cover notes for it, and she did. And she mentions there how he used to get her to clean the spark plugs of the Southern Cross, and uh, to, to, so that she she'd get an idea of how the uh, <laughs> how the how the workings how it worked. And yeah, so yes, I, I was I'm very honoured to have her uh, on this record. And the other person that wrote the cover notes was my mother, who's well over 100 now, she's still alive, and you're going to say probably, what's she got to do with the Southern Cross? Well, I'll tell you what, a little bit of trivia. She was actually present there at Mascot Airport in 1928 on that historic day to see um, history being created. She was there at the uh, airport, in the, which was only like a big paddock in those days, Mascot, and she saw the plane come in and there was over 300,000 people there. She was only a young girl, of course, at the time. And um, I remember Nancy Bird Walton saying to me once that in those days what he did made so much uh, interest, it was equivalent to man's first moon landing. Mm. She said not only was it big news all around Australia but all around the world. Yeah, yeah well, I did uh, um, see another article that it actually... Um, uh, didn't even come to the same... Well, it was bigger than, than uh, the opening at Harbour Bridge. It certainly was. Yes. Excuse me, let's have a glass of water. I don't know that, that, I don't know that brand. It's alkaline. I wouldn't go anywhere without it. The world's best water.
Oh, okay. I must try it. Gives me a kick. All right. Right. And my ultimate aim now is the reason I've, um, I'm telling you all this on, on, on YouTube is to um, let you all know that our ambition now is to put on a stage a big concert, commemoration concert at Sydney State Theatre. And the uh, reason being to commemorate Charles Kingswood Smith, to have a lot of aviation people present there and to speak on the night. And at the same time, we could launch my CD. And uh, if that happens, uh, profits from that particular concert are going to be donated to Care Flight Australia, who are doing oh, a wonderful, wonderful job, as you know. Yep, yep, yep. Couldn't go to all so That's my better. ultimate aim. But to do that, of course, we need a sponsor. So if there's anybody out there who'd like to sponsor this concert, you'd be getting involved in something very, very special for Australia. Okay, Johnny. Well, look, it, it, yeah, you, I hope you get the sponsor, and I'll stay in touch with you, and you can keep us informed uh, as to how it's going, and uh, and if the concert comes off, and who knows, it might become a regular thing for Careflight to be able to do something. Well, as I said, the whole aim of the project, Ken, is to keep the name of Charles Kingswood Smith and Charles Owen, because he was there too. He was the co-pilot, and he was the brains behind it all as well. So keep the name of those two great Australians, and they're both Aussies, so keep their name alive and, and so that they'll go down in, in, in years to come. And maybe hopefully get it back into our school curriculum. Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> It'd be Thank fabulous. You anyway, Johnny, thanks for uh, the interview, yep, and uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much.